my mother worked on the main street, and um, she, uh, like I say, she worked in the halls. It was dry goods and clothing. But um, Johnny Albertson, he ran the bakery, and his father ran the bakery before him, and him and his brother, the brother mostly uh, drove the delivery truck, but, but Albert, he was the, um, he was the baker. And uh, oh boy, they had the best long johns in the world. Oh, we would just die for them. And then the other, down, the, down the road was the uh, Thistle Shamrock. It was a restaurant. And uh, I always, like, if you, I got an allowance of 25 cents. And actually, it was before, I got a, used to get an allowance of 15 cents, but when it was raised to 25 cents, I was really excited because now I could buy an ice cream sundae at the Thistle Shamrock. And uh, you, you, you always thought you were with the, there was always the older kids because my, my sister was uh, five years older and she had to look after me. So like when I was 10 years old and she was 15 years old, I'd be in the Thistle Shamrock with all these 15 year old girls and I thought that was just the greatest. And But, but rarely did I spend my whole 25 cents on an ice cream sundae. You would rather go down and, and you could buy a nickel cone or a 10 cent cone and the best cones in town were from the bake shop, you know, the Niagara Home Bakery. We used to we used to go over there and get them. And you could go to the show, like the Brock Theater. I can remember it was it was twelve cents to go into the show, and that meant you had three cents left over for a penny candy. And those days candies were like three for a penny, so you, you could buy nine candies when you you know that was a great deal. And uh, the pop was uh, ten cents. Chocolate bars were a nickel. But uh, yeah, the, the Brock Theater, that was that was a great place because uh, when as you're growing up, you know, every every Saturday afternoon, you'd go in at one, and you'd get out about four, and uh, oh, it's just the the sun hitting your eyes as you come out of the dark theater, you know, and there'd just be a flood of kids running out onto the street, and then as you got older, of course, they had a, a late show from seven till nine, and uh, you're. It was a big deal because it had to be adult accompaniment. They wouldn't let kids in. So you would stand outside the show and ask them, will you, will you take me into the show? And somebody would say, sure, you know, and they'd take you in. Of course, once you got in, you would, you're on your own, you, you know, but um, you always wanted to go up in the balcony in the theater. That was a big deal. But, uh, oh, yeah, what were some of the other stories? Johnny the Shoemaker, I always remember that because we always had to, like, he only had one pair of shoes, so there's something wrong with him. He took them and got them fixed. And um, there was a number of hardware stores. Fries. He was right on right on the corner of Regent and um, Queen. It was a, a good hardware store. And then of course there was, there was Harrison's Lumberyard and Hardware. And then uh, up a little up a little ways, uh, right right by. Um, oh, I'm trying to think what was there. There was Mulholland's. Then there was Mrs. Bolton. It was a, it was a residence at the at the time. She lived there. And next to it was. Uh, Oh, Campbell's Dairy. Yeah, it was Campbell's Dairy. And next to that was Boychuk's. They had a hardware store. But John Campbell had a dairy on the, on the main street. And then later he sold out to Avondale. But uh, that was always a great place. And of course, the Club 19. That was, that was the, the, the place to be. But, but again, there was a pecking order. You couldn't just go and hang out at the Club 19 when you were young. You had to wait, wait your age until you could hang out in front of the Club 19. Then there was another restaurant called the Mona Lisa, which was on the other side of the street, next to next to Marino's. Yeah, Pete Marino. He always he had a veg, vegetable store, grocery store, and he used to sit. He was a big man, and he would sit out on the edge of the window, and of course just, we'd sit there and talk to everybody all day long. And then, but the, the most <coughs> place where we spent most of our time was the livery stable. It, were, it was where the um, the livery stable. Uh, John Campbell actually inherited it when Jack Green. Jack Green lived over on the corner of Center Street, Center, uh, corner of Center and King. And he had water at the stable for the horses, but he didn't have water in his house. So every night he would ride home with a pail of water in his hand for, for the use at home. But anyway, he had about, um, oh, I'm going to say 10 or 12 horses that you could rent for, and I, don't, I think it was maybe a couple dollars an hour, but we always used to get free rides by working around the stable, doing whatever, you know, just playing around. He'd let us ride a horse just to get rid of us. But um, my mother would always tell me, don't you go near the stable. Stay away from that. Oh, of course, Mom, I won't go near the stable. And I would come home, and she would always knew that I'd been in the stable. And I'd say, how does she know? How does she always know that I go to the stable? And she knows every time when I come home. And old Jack, he used to sit in front of the stable, lean back in his chair. Whenever he saw me coming, he would sing Danny Boy. 
and I you know, waved to him because he was good friends with my father. I remember a few, a few times, my father used to uh, like to drink, and he would go over to the Prince of Wales, and it was a not like the Prince of Wales today. It was a pretty tough place then. You fight your way in and fight your way out. But uh, a couple of times, I remember my dad coming home. There'd be a horse tied to the uh, back door because he figured, well, he might not get home if he was walking, but he knew if he was on a horse, he would get home. So he borrow one of Jack's horses to, to go to get home <laughs> and he would take him back the next day so but uh, Jack was Jack was a, a nice guy and and, and he, he run a successful business there uh, you know but all the all the kids wanted to go in and pet the horses and Jack would usually give them something to do like shovel out the manure or right. something you know so it was a great place to to hang out